I talk with a lot of trainers who spend a lot of time on social media. They're posting constantly, they're starting to build a big following, but they have no idea how to convert these followers, this new giant audience that they've captured the attention of, into paying clients, into customers, into people who buy their courses and their books and check out their training programs. So what we're going to do today is go over my little key points on knowing the difference between being an influencer and running a business. Let's jump into it. So my first thing here is an objective assessment. You need to reflect on your primary purpose. All right, what is your primary objective? Are you focused on creating content for the sake of engagement, which is totally fine if that's what you're trying to do, or are you strategically using social media to grow your dog training business? Depending on what your goals are, right, if you're just trying to get a big TikTok following because you want to get brand awareness, which is not what you should be doing, then fine, go do that. But if you're trying to run a business, then you need to have some type of actionable way and objectively look at how is my social media driving people to a sales page where I can show them what I do and they can work with me. Second here, audience engagement versus conversion. This is very similar to that first piece here. What we're looking for is not just people who are you know, interacting with us and liking and commenting and sharing our posts, but rather people who go check out the link in our bios or they go and check out the free PDFs that we offer. Right? We need to find some way of converting them from an audience member onto our email list so that we can market to them or, even better, get them into our training programs and actually work with them. Content alignment and services. Right, You have to analyze the connection between your content and the services that you provide. If you do services for board and train on puppies and young dogs, but all of your content is towards old dogs or random life hacks, then they're not cohesive. They don't make any sense, right? Your content has to clearly showcase your expertise as a dog trainer, right? Instead of being focused on trends and popular topics. Now there is a balance and dog trainers, some of them are absolutely amazing at doing this. Well, they'll do a trend. They'll do a, a you know trending topic or a popular topic and they'll get some traction there. They'll get these uh, big outreach videos and then they niche down and they talk with our audience and they build more of a relationship with them over here and then convert them. That is an amazing technique. It does take a lot of practice to do. So pick one, get really good at it, and then start adding the other one into the business. But you need to have some alignment between your content and the services that you offer. Number four here, metrics emphasis. Right? If you're not thinking about the metrics that you prioritize, Right? If you're not objectively studying it, if you're not measuring it, then you cannot improve it. So you have to consider the metrics that you prioritize. Are you more concerned with vanity, likes, follows, shares, things like we talked about? Or do you regularly chat, uh, track and emphasize metrics related to actual business growth? Every time you post a video, what do you get back out of it? How many people are seeing it? How many people are seeing it and then clicking on the link and going to your video, uh, your sales video, your sales page? How many people are reaching back out to you to schedule a consultation once you post a photo? Right? You have to be able to track those numbers and convert them. If you can't do it, pay a VA to do it, a virtual assistant. Get someone else to look at the numbers and then interpret it for you. But every time you put something out into the universe, you have to get something back. Call to action effectiveness. Most people do not do this uh, as well as they should, especially in social media. In social media, here's a very simple formula that I use constantly. Hook story offer you have a hook you you grab their attention you get a hold of their their focus for a little bit you share a story or your information or your education your whatever it is and then a call to action hey hit the follow button hey subscribe to the youtube channel hey go check out this free resource whatever it is right so you want to assess what your call to action strategies are depending on what platform you are on social media will determine what you're doing but right we're trying to run a business here so you want to be driving them towards a business growth. Are you trying to get them on your email list? Maybe you do a newsletter. Are you trying to get them to see this new video you posted on YouTube so you can build a stronger relation and then get them onto your newsletter? Or are you trying to get them to schedule a consultation with you? Right? It has to be geared towards driving immediate action, such as signing up for coordination or purchasing of a service. Or, and maybe you don't do big ticket items because it's difficult to get someone who you've interrupted on social media to go give you $1,000. But... You need something 
that is more than just likes and comments and shares. All right. Now we talk to monetization strategies and there is some gray area here because some dog trainers don't really have a good business, but they make a lot of money from YouTube monetization. And that is totally fine. If the social media platform you're on ends up paying you well, then sure, go for it. That's totally fine. But you want to reflect what your monetization approach is. Are you actively and strategically monetizing your social media presence? Again, every post that you put out gives you something back, whether it's an email, whether it's a sale, whether it's more information to learn from and make your content better. But we don't want to do that too much. Or are you focus primarily on building a following without a clear plan of business revenue. Too often I've seen trainers who have this massive following of dog trainers or owners that have nothing to do with the business that they operate, right? Let's say you make, you know, a hundred videos and you end up getting puppies, but you deal with older dogs, right? That's just a huge contrast there. So you deal with older dogs. Now you got to wait 15 years for the people that you have an audience with to work with you. It doesn't make sense. You need to be cohesive, like we mentioned earlier, and you need to have a very similar primary focus on building a clear business revenue, not just putting out things into the universe. Email utilization. I've mentioned this a little bit, so we'll go over it quickly. You got to build your email list. It's the only way to have consistent traffic. Whether the social media gets destroyed, your ads get destroyed, you control the emails. So you need to get people on your email list. Sales funnel awareness, right? You need to guide them towards your sales funnel. If you don't have a sales funnel, you need one. Go to caninebusinessbuilder.com, apply to work with me, let me build out your sales funnel. Client testimonials and case studies, people do not do this enough. All of your social media should have some type of case study up there at least once a week, if not more. Build the authority, build your credibility and your trust. The social proof is prominent. People will see it and they go, oh my gosh, this person actually trains. This person does this thing that they keep showing me on these videos. I want to work with them. Right? You're not just posting these videos to post these videos and have fun. You're trying to grow a business. And last but certainly not least is a mindset shift. Right, This is huge. Once I started to think about this, and I've mentioned it several times throughout this video, once I started to understand this, my social media completely changed. I'm going to read it verbatim here. Evaluate your mindset towards ROI, return on investment. Do you consistently analyze the return on investment of your social media efforts? Or is the focus primarily on creating content without a clear understanding of its impact on your business? What does this mean? This means that if you put out 30 videos and none of them do well, and none of them provide you with an email, none of them provide you with a sale, whatever you did for those 30 videos does not work. Where, it, where you posted it could be wrong, how you posted it, what the video's content was, the keywords, or the timing, any of those things could be wrong. So what you need to do is create enough volume, get out there enough to get enough data to then consistently wean down what you need to work on and focus on something heavily. There is a fine balance. You do not want to be everywhere all at once. That's where the mistake I made. I was all over the place and there was too much information for me to sift through and find the right answers. So here's my homework for you. Go back through this video, hit each point, Look at your marketing plan, your social media. Are you an influencer or are you a business owner? And change your mindset. Everything that goes out into the universe has to give you something back. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon.